really like the music, Eddie. Just think it's my brother's opening night with his own group, and, and he's playing this song especially for me. Sure as could be. You must be very proud of him. Oh, I am. Will you do something for me? Sure, please. Just take this note and give it to Chuck when this number finishes. It's from Gran. And ask him to come sit with us if he can. Okay, be right back. Can make Mister, I don't know you, and I don't want to. And I'm with someone. Now, you get away from here. Doll, you're chopping me. Is this man bothering you, Bernice? Yes. Now, you better leave, mister. What are you doing here? You're colorblind? This girl's white. We're on a date. What's it to you? Well, she's got a better date. Now, split, Rastus. You're the one who'd better go. One of those, huh? Listen, you have no right to talk to a girl like that. You know better than her. <laughs> That's nothing. I'm all right. Chuck, we're going to leave. No, nobody's going to leave. He's wrong, not us. I'll take care of all the effects of this Bundy. Chuck, I don't want to cause any more trouble. It wasn't your fault. Now, you and Eddie sit back down. Come on. All right, Chuck. I'll go wash up. I'll, I'll be I'll back. see what's in here. Right. How'd it start? That guy get wrecked? While Eddie was away from the table, and then he thought I was white. Same old thing. I guess I'll have to wear a sign around my neck saying I'm a Negro. Same thing at school today. Chuck, I'm quitting. I'm going to get a job and help out at home. B, if you only wait a while. The boys and I are only getting scale now. But if we go good here, I'll soon be able to make enough so you won't have to work. For Mom, either. Then she can come home instead of working for those people. Let's not talk about that now. This is your big night, the start of a new name in jazz, Charles Beethoven Lee. I'm so proud of my big brother. Thanks, Pete. I gotta get back now. We'll play something special for you. What's Chuck doing in that nightclub joint? Just fine, Gran. Everybody loves their music. What's the matter, baby? Oh, Gran, I've never had such a terrible day in my life. Everybody has those. What happened? Just everything. Today at school and tonight. What about school? Well, I made friends with a nice white girl. And when she found out you were colored, she wasn't so nice. Yes. I meant to tell her after classes, but, but at lunchtime she spread it all over school that I was a smart little Negro girl passing for white. Now all the girls snub me, including the Negro girls. Gran, I can't go back to that school ever. I'm so ashamed. You better talk to your mother about quitting school. I'm going to in the morning. Well, what happened tonight? Well, tonight, a white man started a fight with Eddie over me. He thought I was white, so he picked on Eddie. Did Eddie get hurt? Well, no, not much. Just mad. They broke it up. Too bad it happened. It happens every place I go, Gran, because I'm different. Those are Gabby people. 
And there are lots of them, white ones and colored ones. But there are lots of real good people who don't care what your race or color is. People like the Cars back in Virginia. Ah, when I worked for Mrs. Carr, I was with real ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to see you with people like that. I'd love to know people like Mrs. Carr. People who don't look down on you if you're Negro. But how am I going to know people like that, Gran? I'm nothing. Don't say that. You're as good as anybody, anywhere. And you can be proud of your family just like I am. Oh, Gran, I, I am proud of my family. But I'm different. I'm not really a Negro, and, and I'm not a white. But why can't I be what I look to be? What people take me for? So you're thinking about passing for white? How can I help but think about it? I am white, like my grandfather. I know you don't talk much about it, Gran, but you married a white man. Yes, I did. But if I had it all to do over again, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't do it. Oh, why, Gran? Children, honey. Having children of mixed blood, like you, especially like you, there's where the real trouble is. Oh, I understand, Gran. But I'm not going to get married. I've thought about it a lot, and I don't want to get married. That's what you think now. Well, why couldn't I get a job as a white girl, just at work? How could you be white at work? We colored at home. You'd start making white friends and telling lies. Besides, your mother wouldn't stand for it. She's strong against passing and worries about you all the time. But there are some who pass. They're living behind lies. I wish I could be a real Negro or a real white person. Somebody. I don't know what to do. Well, my dear, you did very well on your typing and aptitude test. Oh, thank you. You may start Monday as a file clerk and typist. And later on, if you complete your shorthand, you'll stand a good chance for... I'm terribly sorry, Miss Lee. I didn't know you were Negro. The store has a policy. It's not personal, but... Don't explain. I, I understand. Miss Lee, I could hire you for an elevator girl. No, thank you. Too bad. If you hadn't put it down, you'd have gotten the job. I would have liked you to have had it. I appreciate that. And thank you very much. <laughs> make you feel a lot better. Thank you. Oh, well, we'll be in Chicago soon, so if you'd like to take a little walk, you may. Thank you. Is this seat taken? No. Thank you. Uh, would you like a paper? No, thank you. Fasten your seat belts, please. Feeling ill? 
A little. Oh, sorry. Can I get you anything? A drama mean? Oh, no, thank you. I've had two already. Oh, that bad, hmm? Awful. Would you like to have a drink? We have scotch, bourbon, and martinis. Oh, my, no, thank you. Uh, yes, miss, I'd like a martini, please. All righty. You know, miss, you shouldn't think about it. It just makes it worse. Now, maybe I can help you. What do you like to talk about? Books, music, art, literature, football? Oh, I don't mean to be impolite, mister, but I do not want to talk. Oh. Oh, sorry. Here's your drink, sir. Thank you. Uh, now, miss, don't say anything, please, but just listen. Now, what you really need is a drink. I, I know you think it'll be disagreeable, but if you'll drink this martini, it'll settle your stomach and pick you up. I always have a drink when I get on a plane. Helps smooth out the rough bumps. Really? That's right. Now, what do you say, miss? Miss, uh... Oh, Lila Brownell. Oh, I'm Frederick Layton. Rick for short. Now, look, you drink that, and you'll forget all about being sick. All right, Mr. Layton, I'll try. Anything to get rid of this horrible feeling. Now, go ahead. That's right. Now, you give that a minute, and then drink the rest of it, and you'll feel much better. You know, as a matter of fact, it seems to me that seasickness and air sickness is all mental anyway. What about you? I drank your drink. Oh, well, uh, I'll ring for another one. Excuse me. There. Well, how does that feel now? Well, not very good. I'm getting all hot inside. Well, now, wait a minute. You just relax and forget about it. As I was saying, it seems to me that it's all mental anyway. If you let your mind dwell on the plane and the motion of the plane, where you are, the plane going back and forth, up and down with the wind currents, if you let your mind do that, then you're bound to. Uh, what's the matter, miss? Oh, uh, are you going to... Oh, this is not mental. Oh, would you like another martini, sir? Uh, no. No, thanks. One was enough. nice of you to give me a lift, Mr. Layton. Well, it was nice of you to let me, after what I did to you with that martini. Oh, don't even mention it. Besides, I wasn't feeling too well the whole trip. Are you from California? No. I'm from Virginia, Richmond. I was just visiting California, an aunt. Oh. Uh, you going to be staying here long before going back home? For a while. I may decide to stay. I've never been here before. Well, you'll find it a lot different from uh, Richmond, was it? Yes. I should have known from your accent. Is my accent that noticeable? Oh, no, no, it isn't broad. It's just that, uh, well, I do seem to detect a certain inflection in y'all's speech. Your family must feel bad about you leaving home. Oh, yes. You from a large family? Brothers, sisters? Oh, am I asking enough questions? You just said something, Mr. Lake. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I did manage to squeeze a little information out of you, didn't I? Now, you haven't told me where to drop you off, and that's a statement. The Marazon. It's a hotel for girls. All right. The Marazon, please. Thanks ever so much, Mr. Lake. Oh, this is my, was my pleasure. Good luck for you to see you. Bye now. I'd like to get a small room and arrange to have my meals here. I'm sorry, miss. We haven't had a vacancy for two weeks. But I can put you on our waiting list. Oh, dear. Could you suggest another hotel for girls? You might try the Lexicon, a couple of blocks down Lexington Avenue. All right, thanks. I will.
your typing's all right. And your appearance is certainly something. Caucasian. Mr. Gordon's a hound for detail. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Roberts, have we heard from Calvin this morning? No, we haven't, Mr. Gordon. Would you like to see the applications now, Mr. Gordon? This young lady is one of the applicants. The one on top. Yes, yes, I see. Very interesting. Jim's uh, very efficient. Uh, the type of young lady we need around here. Miss Brownell, Mr. Gordon. How do you do? Yeah, hello. Here, Miss Roberts, we won't need these. Well, Miss, when can you start? Oh, why, any time. Now, tomorrow. Tomorrow will be fine. Miss Roberts here will explain everything. We're very happy to have you with us, Miss Brownell. Thank you, Miss Roberts. You did it. You really did. No, Lila. You did it. <laughs> Borden. Evil? Yes. But what you might call an inactive wolf. He is, he is, but not the... Oh, actually, he's very nice. Now, how would you like a few details about your work? Fine. This is your desk. The filing cabinet's in back. Good morning, Mr. Gordon. Good morning, Miss Brownell. You seem very cheerful this morning. Getting familiar with our system? Oh, yes, sir. I'm having a little trouble with the trade lingo language, but I'll get it. Miss Brownell, if you have any trouble with anything, you just come into my office and I'll be very happy to see you. Good morning, Mr. Gordon. Good morning, Miss Robert. So, uh, I want to remind you girls to come to our advertising agency's cocktail party tonight at the Roden. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. We'll be there. Sally, are we really invited to a party? We're more than invited. We're ordered to go. It's the annual shindig for the ad company's clients. But it's great. About 200 men to two dozen girls. You'll love it. Oh, boy, my first New York party. That's something. What'll I wear? Oh, just what you got on. We go from here. to it anyway. People won't bother you. Just sit it. Isn't there any place for people to sit down? No, nobody ever sits at these things. The whole idea is to crowd people together, get acquainted easier. <laughs> Nothing like personal contact. Oh, that reminds me. The boss wants to see you. Probably wants to see how you feel. Excuse me. Excuse me? Pardon me. <laughs> Miss Brownell. Excuse me. Lila. <laughs> Mr. Layton. No, no, Rick, remember? Gee, I've been looking all over town for you. Well, now, listen, if, if that's a martini, you remember I didn't give it to you. Oh, no, not this time. Sally gave it to me, but I'm not going to drink it, honest. Sally who? Oh, I'm sorry. Sally, this is Mr. Layton. Rick, meet Sally Roberts. Well, hello, Miss Roberts. Nice to know you. Uh, excuse me just a minute. Jay! Hey, Jay, come on over here. Yeah. Oh, Jay, I found her. Miss Brownell, Jay Morgan. Hello, Mr. Morgan. Glad to know you, Miss Brownell. Oh, now I know why Rick was looking for you. And Miss Roberts, Mr. Morgan. Sally. Jane. Imagine that. You're the stranger in town, and you're introducing me to men. Shall we get you a drink? Oh, yes, thanks. Oh, here's the drink I owe you. Oh, well, thank you. You said you were looking for me. Yes, for two days. But how do you happen to be at this party? Are you with the agency? No, no, I just came in here looking for you, and then all these people pushed me in. But how did you know I was here? Well, let me tell you, it wasn't easy. First, I called all the girls' hotels in New York until I found the lexicon. And then I threatened to beat up the woman at the desk until she told me where you worked. And your receptionist at the office told me about this party, and here I am. Okay with you? I'm glad you came. I don't know any of these people except Sally and our boss, Mr. Gordon. And well, then look, Lila, why don't we get out of this mess? Hmm? Well, a little later we could. 
But I better go find the boss so he'll know I was here. Oh, okay. Do you want me to wait here? No, you better come with me, or I'll never get away from him. He's crazy for girls. <laughs> What's the matter with that? Nothing. Come on, let's go. Okay. See you later. Bye-bye. Rick? Yes, we're going dancing tonight. Well, I must say you're moving fast with Rick Layton. You know, when you started going with him, I decided to do a little snooping. The Laytons are an old New England family, money and social standing. You're doing all right. Has he made a pass at you yet? No, of course not. He's real nice. But he did try to kiss me. You mean you didn't let him? No, it was in a restaurant. But I like him a lot. What about you and Jay? You're dating him, aren't you? I'll say I am. He's the swellest boy I ever met. And to think that you introduced me to him. Well, has he made a pass at you? Sure, from the beginning. You don't mean me. Oh, no, wait a minute. You're getting ahead of me. Say, why don't we get together? I've got a date with Jay Friday. I'll cook dinner in my flat. All right, we'd love it. I'll ask Greg. Well, here it is. What do you think of it? Well, I think it's fine. Hello, Eddie. Good evening, miss. Hi, Mrs. Layton. Everyone's gone. The place is all yours. The record player's over there. Oh, that's swell, Eddie. Thanks a lot. Uh, how long can we stay? Oh, all night, if you wish, so long as you latch the door on the way out. You sure you don't want me to play the piano? No, 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 thanks, Eddie. I think we'll get along just fine. Thank you. Night, miss. Good night. Good night. Good night, Eddie. Where on earth did you get such a crazy idea? Well, I got it from you. You said you liked dancing and liked lots of room, so, well, Eddie, he plays music out at the club. We set this up. Uh, Lila, if you don't like it, we can always... Oh, no, I think it's wonderful. We have this whole dance floor to ourselves and a zillion records. Myself. I, I got my B.A. in my business administration at Cornell. Then I went to work for my father, mainly in metal products, including golf clubs. I think he's going to turn that division over to me later on. And I get a chance to travel around the country quite a bit. Gives me an excuse to play some more golf. That's how I happen to be on that Chicago plane. Oh, let's not talk about that, okay? Okay. Sorry, kids. I've got to make a train. And I'm going down to the station with him. Oh, well, now, isn't that too bad? You have to leave us here all by ourselves. Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? I'll be back. Later. So long. So long. Bye. Bye. Well. It was such a fun. I'm sorry they had to leave, aren't you? No, no, I'm not. I'm glad. Why? Stop that. You're twisting that poor cat's ears off. You're sadistic. No, I'm not. I wouldn't hurt that cat. I love animals. Well, I'd hate to have you love me and pull my ears like that. Well, I, I wouldn't be pulling your ears. I'd... I'd be kissing them. I've never had anyone kiss my ears before. Mr. Layton, I didn't ask for a massage. A massage? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I guess I'm kind of new at it. I need them practice. Well, I'll get you the cat back. No, Lila, wait. Wait. Now, look, no hands. No hands. How's that? Sweet.
You must stop. We can't keep on doing that. I'm sorry, Lila. I, I just can't be near you without wanting to kiss you or touch you. I've never known anyone like you before. What do you mean, like me? Well, I mean, you're, you're so full of life, exciting, beautiful. Are you calling me all that? Lila, you're everything you make me feel. Oh, stop saying so much, Rick. You don't know much about me. You shouldn't be kissing me and kissing me. Hello? Why, well, yes, Rick. There's something wrong. It's three o'clock in the morning. You what? Oh, you love me. Oh, you want me to marry you? Oh, Rick, do you know what you're saying? Are you awake? Rick, listen to me. It's too soon. I don't think we know each other well enough. There's so much you don't know about me. Why don't you wait and find out how you feel later? But you can wait, honey. Well, no, I can't meet you right now. I have to go to work in the morning. I have to sleep. I don't know, Rick. I have to think. Call me in two or three days. Think it over. Here. You say you're Negro, but your grandfather was white and your father was almost white. I say you're as much a white person as Negro. More so because of your coloring. You're as white as I am. And the cross between the two has certainly turned out a very beautiful person. Thanks, honey. But that doesn't solve my problem. If there's a problem, then you are in love with him. Oh, yes, I am so much so. But I can't marry him, can I? That's an awful big question, Lila. Are you absolutely sure you want to marry him? Oh, yes, absolutely sure. I've never known anything like it from the very beginning. I tried to pretend that it was only the novelty of going out with a nice white boy, but I forgot that right away, that I was Negro and he was white. It all seemed so natural like it was meant to be. I, I just didn't think of it anymore. Well, you're in a tough spot. I wish I could tell you what to do. But there are things you've got to think about. His family, for instance. They're the kind that will insist on knowing your background. And believe me, you can't let them. If you tell Rick and he tells them, you're gone. If I tell Rick, I'm sure he'll tell them. He's like that. He's already told me they talk about everything important. Mm -hmm. It figures. So you can't tell him about being Negro. And then there's your own family. You'd have to invent one. Oh, yes, I know that. And babies. What if you got married to him and had a baby? There's a risk it might yes, be. Yes, I know. My grandmother was married to a white man. We talked about it. She told me I shouldn't pass for white, but I did anyway. But I didn't ever expect to meet Rick and feel like I do now. I didn't know it was going so far. Oh, Sally, how can I give him up when I love him so? I know I can make him happy. I just know it. Oh, don't take it so hard, Lila. It isn't over yet. Maybe it could work out. What if I didn't have any babies? Lots of married people don't have them. But Rick is the important thing. And I think he loves me, Sally, like I love him. Well, I... I guess if you really love each other enough, it could work. But I think you should give yourself a little time. Oh, yes, I will. Lila. Lila, look, I've got to talk to you. Now, it's, it's, you've been avoiding me ever since I asked you to marry me, Lila. Oh, Rick, honey, I Lila, the you. only thing that matters now is if you love me. 
And, and I've got to know one way or the other. Oh, Rick, give me a little time to think about it. Why can't you wait a little while until we know each other better? There are things you don't know about me, my family... Lila, I know everything about you. I have to know. Now, you can spend the next 40 years telling me about yourself and your family. The only important thing now is if you love me. That's the only important thing? Yes, Lila, the important thing. More important than anything? Other people, what I am, your family, everything? Yes, Lila, everything. Now... Lala, tell me you love me and that you'll marry me. I do love you, Rick. You... Oh, Lila, that's wonderful. Look, I've got a great idea. This Saturday, we'll drive up to the country and you'll meet Mother and Dad and... Oh, Lila, they'll love you. And, and we'll arrange to get married right away. Oh, Rick, right away? Well, shouldn't we be engaged first? What? No, no, no. We, we've been engaged already and didn't even know it. Be upstairs. I'll go in the living room. Just wait. And relax. Take your time, honey. This is Lila. Well, so you're Lila. We've heard such glowing things about you. I must say you're even prettier than Rick said. It's so lovely meeting you, Mrs. Slayton. And I've heard a lot about you, too. Oh, Rick and I get along. Hi, Rick. Oh, hello, Dad. Listen, well, hell, you... introduce me to the beautiful girl. There, that's the way to meet a girl. My, you are lovely. And Rick is a very lucky boy. Thank you, Mr. Layton. It's sweet of you to say that. Mrs. Layton, lunch is ready. Cook would like to serve it now. Uh, very well, Bertha. We'll be right in. We'll go in now. Can't keep Cook waiting. Why, Lala, dear, you've hardly eaten a thing. Are you on a diet? Oh, no, Mrs. Layton. I had a big breakfast. You've been asking us so many questions, the poor child hasn't had a chance to eat. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I suppose I have at that. But this has all happened so suddenly. We've had so little chance to get to know you. You know, I can't even remember your mother's name. Maiden name, I mean. Carr. Oh, yes, the Cars of Richmond. I must remember to ask Florence Sutter about them. She has a sister who lives in Richmond. She comes to New York every fall. Oh dear, I can't remember her name now. Be interesting if they knew each other. Oh, yes, it would. When do you expect to go to Richmond? To Richmond? For the wedding arrangements, the invitations and announcement. Or do you think your family will come here to arrange things? I am so anxious to meet them. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. It's quite all right, dear. Well, now, look, let's get back to my favorite subject, all right? The wedding announcements, hmm? Mom and Gran won't be able to come to the wedding, Mrs. Layton. And they're not in Richmond just now. They had to go to California last week. My mother's sister, Aunt Lila, is very ill. She lives near Los Angeles. Well, Lila, you didn't tell me that. Well, you didn't give me much chance. But what a pity. We'll have to postpone the wedding until they get back. Well, I'm afraid it will be quite a while until they return. You see, after Aunt Lila gets well, if she does, they're going to take a boat trip to South America with my uncle. The company he's with sells all machinery to Venezuela, and he's going to move there later on. They even want Mom and Gran to move there. How interesting. How long will they be gone? Well, I'm not exactly well, Mother, sure. Mother, look, it really doesn't matter. We're not going to postpone the wedding. Lila and I agree on that. Now, couldn't you send out the announcements for them? Why, yes, Rick. Of course I could. Uh, Lila, when will you get your list from your mother? I was wondering, Rick, why couldn't we have a small private wedding and not cause all this trouble? Nonsense. Utter nonsense. I'm sure your mother would shudder to hear you say that. Marriage is the most important event in Rick's life. And yours, too. It must be done right. Now that that's settled, Lila, all we need from you is your list for Mother. Well, I'll get started on it right away. But I'm afraid not very many will be able to come. Oh, Lila, let's have our coffee up in my sitting room. I want to write down the full names of all your family and relatives. I'd love it. Well, boy, 
We shan't be seeing anything of them for several hours. Let's go over to the club. We can have our coffee there. Okay, fine, Dad. Now, Lila, just a minute. River Jasper Black. That's a good one. 176 Pleasant Street. All right, but that's the second one. Don't give me any more preachers. Okay. Here's a doctor, Frank R. Bartom, M.D. No doubt he was your psychiatrist when you were a baby. I need one now. What if some of these people answer? The latent's address will be on the cards. What if they do? We have people here who wouldn't know whether they know you or not. Judges, councilmen, lawyers, preachers. They all get letters from people they don't know. Well, I hope you're right. Why didn't you say your family lived in Alaska? Richmond's so close, so easy to check on. I told Rick that on the plane when I first met him. I didn't ever expect to see him again. But at least there's some truth in it. Grant's from there. Well, you better read up all you can on Richmond. So you have some answers. I've been doing that ever since we started dating. Now, what about the presents that I'm not going to get from my best friends in Richmond? Well, we'll have to buy a few. And we'll get one of the company salesmen to mail them from Richmond. If you need a little money, I can loan you about a hundred. And you can get credit. Thanks, honey. And I've got a girlfriend in Hollywood who can mail a couple of presents from your folks. See, we've almost got it licked. Yes, I guess so. But I can't help worrying about it. There are so many things. And it's growing all the time. Will you go shopping with me Saturday? I can't figure out what to buy myself for my wedding present. It's a date. I'd rather shop than eat. Now you select the ones of invitations while I make us some coffee. All right. You know, you'll be the only one from my side to come to the wedding. That's going to look bad. Oh, telegrams. I thought of that. We'll pick out some of those names, mostly public officials, and have Western Union send you wires of regret. I don't know what I'd do without you, Sally. Oh, I almost forgot something. I bought this in an antique shop. This is Mother, to show to the Laytons. I haven't got anything else to show them. What do you think? It's lovely. So nice and old-fashioned. Now, how about some coffee? And let's finish all this up. All right. You sure have pretty hair, Miss Lila, so dark and straight. Why, thank you, Bertha. Why, it's time to go, dear. You must get your dress on. Why, yes, I will. Right away, Mrs. Layton. Will everybody be on time? Well, yes, everyone else. Rick's gone already. Nervous as a cat, but so handsome, so like his father. I'd better go and see if his father's ready. <laughs> I'll be there in just a few minutes. Oh, and Lala, there were a lot of wires from your friends who couldn't come and some more presents from Richmond. So far, only two of your friends have come. Two friends from Richmond? Yes, a uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jenkins. They were on a trip to New York and drove down. He seems to be a politician of some sort. Yes, he thought I was the bride at first. Said he hadn't seen you since you were a child. <laughs> oh, how funny. Strange, only two people could come up. Well, they're all so busy. Oh, and Lala, the presents from your mother and grandmother were very nice. Now, when you see them, be sure and tell them how disappointed we were they couldn't come. It's too bad your aunt had a relapse. Did you say when I see them? Oh, I meant uh, when you write to them. Hurry up now, dear. I shall be downstairs. Did you hear that, Sally? She said, see them. Impossible. She meant write them. Here, drink some of this. I spiked it with rum. It'll calm you down. Now, let's get you in your dress and go over and get you a new name. Now, join hands. If there be any person who has reason why these two should not be joined in holy matrimony, 
Let him speak now or forever hold his peace. Then, by the power vested in me, I do pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Get our luggage. Well, what's our luggage doing here? This is our new home, Mrs. Layton. Oh, you're pleased. Oh. oh, Rick, you mean this is our home, really? It's wonderful. <laughs> yep, it's all ours. Dad bought it for us and Mother did the decorations. Anything you don't like, we can change. Well, that's surprise number one. Now, surprise number two. Welcome home, Mr. and Mrs. Layton. Congratulations and my wishes for your happiness. Well, thank you, Bertha. But how do you happen to be here? Well, Mrs. Layton said I know Mr. Rick so well, I should work for you all, at least till you find somebody, if you want to. All your traveling bags are in the hall, and I took all the other things upstairs. I brought them over while you were getting married. Thank you, Bertha. I hope you'll always be with us. Thank you, Mr. Rick. I'll be helping your parents with the new girl until you get back from your honeymoon. The champagne's on the little bar here, and I'll be in the kitchen if you want something. Thank you, Bertha. You're an angel. Now, Mr. Layton, where are we going and when? And what's the rest of this secret business? Well, first of all, we're going to look around the house. Uh -huh. Then we're going to drink some champagne to us. Then we're going over to Mother and Dad's. We're going to have dinner. And they're going to take us on out to the airport. Airport? Tell me, where are we going? We're going to Los Angeles. And while we're out there, we can visit with your family. Oh, darling. Make you happy? Oh, yes, Rick. What a sweet thing you're planning that. But what a terrible disappointment. Disappointment? What do you mean? Well, darling, they left last night on a boat for South America. They what? Well, what do you mean? How could they, your aunt? I, I thought she was sick. Why didn't you tell me, Lila? I did tell you about three weeks ago. Oh, Lila, no, you didn't tell me they were leaving now. Mom called me yesterday morning just before I checked out of the hotel to go to Sally's. The doctor examined Aunt Lila and said that she was better and that the long boat trip would be good for her heart. Mom felt bad about leaving and not seeing us, but I told her to please go. Otherwise, they would have had to wait three weeks for the next boat. Oh, Lila, I wish you'd told me. I could have made plans. Tell you? Mr. Layton, I was busy getting ready for a wedding. I haven't even seen you. Besides, why didn't you tell me? Mm. Yeah, I guess I should have. Well, so my big surprise has turned out to be a big, fat bust. <laughs> well, look, I tell you, look, we can go on out there anyway. I've got some friends in L.A. We can stay there a few days and then maybe go on down to Palm Springs. Oh, but Rick, this house, it's beautiful. And it's ours, and we've never seen it before, never lived in it. It's so exciting. Let's stay here now and live in our beautiful house. Let's have our honeymoon here and go away some other time. I'd rather be here than anywhere. Oh, darling, please. Lila, Lila, we have reservations in hotels, airplanes. People are expecting us out there. Everyone here expects us to go. Well, send some wires. Only take you ten minutes. Come on, let's drink some champagne. What do you think about it? Don't talk. Just wish. <sighs> You're a very beautiful man, Mr. Layton. Come on, boss. Let's be happy. Why, well, aren't you happy? I could be happier. How? Oh. By starting our honeymoon. Now. Well, that's a very good argument. Tell me. Well, I don't know how I can make all those phone calls and send those telegrams when I'm trapped. 
Oh, darling, I love you. Come on, I'll help to find you. Now, wait you. a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute now. This will be more efficient. Now, you to your bag, and the ice, and champagne. Take that on upstairs while I phone in our cancellations and tell Bertha to take the rest of the afternoon off. Your strategy is good, sir. And by the way, Mrs. Layton, what do you wear when you go to bed? Hmm? Well, I wear pajama. Tops. Tops? Tops. Tops. Well, that's, that's very intelligent for a beautiful girl. But I was going to wear a gown tonight. Uh-huh. No, no, no. Don't you change. You go on upstairs, and after you get all that stuff arranged up there, you... Well, you hop into those pajama tops, and by that time, I'll have finished with my phone calls, okay? Okay. Orders are orders. All right, now get going. Coffee here and, and lots of newspapers. Oh, good morning, Lila dear. Good morning, Mrs. Layton. Well, Lila dear, it is good to see you two relaxing in your own home. Just like an old married couple. Did I hear something about coffee? Oh, yeah, Dad. Go ahead, sit down. We'll get you some. I'll get cool. the cups. Would you like some coffee, Mrs. Layton? No, thanks. But, Lila, I think it's time you stopped calling me Mrs. Layton. It's too formal for a daughter in law. Should I call you? Mother Layton? Mother Layton. Uh, no, no, I think that sounds too, too old. I think you should call me Anne. All right, Mrs. Anne. I'll get the cards. Oh, uh, Rick, dear, I talked to Freddie Petrie yesterday. You remember him. He's one of the editors of American fashion magazines. He's doing a layout of society weddings, and he'll use one of your wedding pictures if you get them to him by Tuesday. Just everyone will see them. I brought some over. It's one of the top national magazines, Lila. Did you hear that? Why, yes, Rick. I did. I, I think that's very nice, Mrs. Layton. It's very nice indeed, Lila. Are you familiar with the magazine? Why, yes. We get it at home sometimes. Rick, dear, you must see that Petrie gets those tomorrow. Have one of the office boys run them over at Park in 34. Well, Mother, I have an appointment in the morning before I go to the office. I think you'd better play it safe and mail them. Oh, no, no. I'll take them. I'm, I'm dropping by Sally's tomorrow, and I can, I can drop them off on the way. Good. All right. Very good, Mrs. Layton. And if you see old Petrie there, give him my best, will you? Lila, dear, speaking of pictures, may I see some of your family pictures? Why, yes. But I only have one right now of Mother when she was young. I'll go upstairs and get it. Oh, that's sweet of you, Wait dear. a minute, Lila. Don't bother. I've got to get my golf jacket anyway. Where's the picture? Thank you, dear. It's on my dresser. You saw it. Yeah, I'll get it. Lila, did you see this item from your hometown? Senator Marden says that all the fashionable girls' colleges, as well as the public schools, are now freely admitting Negroes. That would include your school. How would you like to... Oh! Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Layton. I'm sorry. Think nothing of it, my dear. It's the effect that I have on beautiful girls. Oh, I do hope it doesn't ruin the finish on this lovely table. Well, Mother, here it is. There, now, you just take a look at that, and you'll see where Lila gets her good looks from. She's a real beauty. You have her dark eyes and hair. A real southern belle. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm glad you like it. Her, I mean. But, Lila, dear, those clothes. Wherever did she get them? Women haven't worn things like that in ages. How old is your mother? Well, you see, she had on Grand's clothes, Grandmother Carr's. I've even had them on myself. Well, well, what a charming idea. <laughs> yes, isn't it? Yes, very charming. Your grandmother had lovely clothes. Oh, Lila, as I was saying, about this article by Senator Marlin. Oh, if you'll excuse me, I, I think I'll put these pictures where I won't forget them. 
Rick, darling, would you mind heating up the coffee for everybody? I'll be right back. Sure, I'll do it. I'll just be a minute. I simply can't make her out. There's something not right about her. Don't you feel it? A little. But I think it's just because she still feels strange with us. She'll get over it. No. She's not natural. She's like a cat in a strange attic. Yes, I'm coming in town to see you. Yes. Tonight? Oh, I think that'd be great. Lyle, I'm leaving now. Oh, Rick. Just a minute, Sally. Sally says since I'm going to be in town with her, why don't you drop by after work and we can all have dinner at her place? She has a date with Jay and they have a new night spot in the village they want us to see. Well, good. Good. Sounds like fun. Oh, it's a date, Sally. Oh, now stop that. It's so early in the morning. <laughs> you won't let me talk. Well, I guess I, I better be going. I'll see you at Sally's end about seven. All right. Bye-bye. Sally. Oh, uh, Lila. Uh, don't forget those pictures, hmm? I won't. Bye, dear. I'm bringing you some pictures which I want your messenger boy to lose. Yes, lose. I'll tell you all about it. And remember that old picture I bought supposed to be mother? Well, Mrs. Layton took one look at the clothes and... Just a minute. Well, I'll tell you about it when I see you. Yes, that's it. See you later, honey. <laughs> Bertha? Yes, Mrs. Layton? Knock when you come into the room, will you please? Yes, ma'am, I'll knock. But I come in like I always come in, every day when I know you're up. When I get used to your ways, I won't bother you, Mrs. Layton. Oh, I didn't mean anything, Bertha. Please forget it. Yes, ma'am. Come on, it's your turn to say it. Let's hear it. My abominables are abdominals. And my abominable. <laughs> abominable. No. My no. abdominals are abominable. I have abominable abdominals. Oh, it's easy. Good. Here, I got another one. It's a little easier. The skunk's head on the stump. The skunk stunk and the stump stunk. All right, you try that, Lila. <laughs> the skunk's head on the stump, the stump skunk, and the skunk. <laughs> <laughs> say, who ordered the martinis? That man over there, he did it. Well, martinis are taboo with me. Oh, really? How come? I think it's something in her deep, dark past. Now, go ahead and drink that, Lila. It's the safest thing to order in these places anyway. All right, boss. Anything you say. Well, I see you're training her good. Well, why don't you train me to drink more champagne, Jay? I will have to arrange for me to take it off my income taxes. That's easy. Just get a statement from your doctor saying that due to your mental instability, champagne is a necessity. Oh, that's a good idea. Sally, I'm awful glad you brought us here. This is a great place. What's the matter, Lila? Are you ill? Oh, I don't feel very good. Must be the martini. I'll be all right in a minute. I think you've got a mental block against martinis. I'm getting sick. I better go to the ladies' room. I'll be right back. I'll go with you. Oh, no, Sally, you stay with the boys. B, baby. Chuck, please. I can't talk to you now. I'll see you later. Oh, B, what's wrong? Oh, please, Chuck, not now. Next time I'm in town, I'll explain. Not here. Well, we won't be here after tomorrow. Oh. 
Excuse me. Okay, B. Be seeing you, B. Now take your hands off my wife! Oh, no! Hurry, can you see that? Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Get him out of here. Get him out! Come on. I didn't want to fight him. Now, who is that? He didn't mean anything, Rick. He's a musician I knew back home. What was he doing putting his hands on you? What's he to you? Nothing, Rick, nothing. I knew him at school. He played for our school dance. School? Well, you left Richmond and school before integration. I didn't mean he went to school. He played for our dances. Well, what right did he have to leave that bandstand and come down here and stop you and put his hands on you the way he did? He must have been showing off. I I'm sure he didn't mean anything. Well, maybe so. And why'd he call you B? And what do you mean by saying he'd be seeing you? Where is he going to be seeing you? Oh, Rick, I don't know. You're asking so many questions. He probably forgot my name. And, and be seeing you is only an expression. You're making such a big thing out of this. Big thing? How do you expect me to feel when I see him putting his hands all over you? Rick, stop it. I'm not responsible for his manners. And he didn't mean anything. Now, if you don't stop all this, I'm going to leave. Besides, I'm feeling sick and, and I want to get out of this place. Okay, Lila, okay. We'll go back to the table and I'll pay the check and we'll leave. We won't say anything more about it. Jay just paid the check. Let's go on to dinner. We're starved. All right, uh, dinner's on me. Hey, darling. I'm sorry about all that. All right, Lila. Look, let's forget it, hmm? Come on. Again. What's happening? It must have been the shrimp last night. I think I'm going to be sick again. Well, you've been sick for the last two mornings. Our food can't be that bad. Maybe I'm getting an ulcer. Oh, excuse me. Well, what is it, Howard? Well, it looks as if I was right. Business is picking up, boy. She's in excellent health. It's odds on that you're going to be a father. A father? Well, well, isn't that something, Howard, huh? You're a wonderful doctor. I gave her something to take. See that she calls me. Okay. Lila? Oh, Lila, that's wonderful. God, nothing could make me happier, darling. Oh, I'm so glad it makes you happy. It is wonderful. It is, it is. Hello. Oh, hi, Sally. Yeah, yeah, just a minute. Lila! Sally? Yes, he's gone. No, I haven't been feeling well lately. Yes, I am worried about the baby. What it'll be like. Maybe it'll be brown or black or... Sally, I'd like to read some books on heredity. Yes, that's right. Now, I should like to propose a toast to the coming third generation of Leighton. That's a good idea. You know, every time I think about it, I realize it's going to make me a grandmother. 
That's right, Grandma. And it's going Don't to make call me. me that. I will not be called Grandma, or Grandmother, or Gran. Now the child can call me Nana, or Ganna, or possibly Mother. How about Big Mama? Lila, what about your mother? I meant to ask you about her and your grandmother. They must be terribly excited about you having a baby. I'm sure they are. Why haven't you heard from your mother since writing to her about the baby? Oh, no, they're still in Caracas. I wrote her airmail, but I haven't received an answer yet. My heavens, child, you should talk to your mother about something so important. She'll be here when the baby comes, won't she? I don't know. I have an idea. Why don't you telephone to her now? That's a good idea, Mother. Why don't you call her, Lila? We could all talk to her. Oh, but she's in South America. Venezuela. Well, that's not so far away. You go right ahead and don't worry about the telephone bill. She'll be thrilled. Go ahead, Lila. Oh, but I don't want to call her now. Not here. We have so much to talk about. In private, I mean. Well, now, don't you worry about that. You can go up in my room and talk, and then when you've finished with your private talk, perhaps we could just say hello. But I just don't... Well, it's so late anyway. Why, it's the same time as here. Let me put the call in for you. What's the hotel? No. No, I just don't want to call her now. Besides, I'm not even sure she's still there. It's late and I'm tired. Rick, I think we ought to go home. All right, all right, Lila. There's no reason to be rude about it. Mother was just trying oh, I'm to... I'm terribly sorry, Mrs. Slayton. I didn't mean to be rude. I'm not feeling well tonight. Oh, Rick, please. Now you've got her all upset. Come on, come on. I'll take you home. I'm sorry, Lila, dear. I didn't intend to upset you. Well, how do you want this? Standing up or lying down? I think I'll lie down. Now, 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 I haven't touched you yet. Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor. Needles scare me. Go ahead. It's already done. Why, I didn't even feel it. Now, what all did you give me? Oh, mostly vitamins. Something to get rid of those nerves and something to build you up a bit. Doctor. When the baby comes, I want to stay awake. Why? Well, if I'm put to sleep, I might say that... Say what? Cuss words? Oh, no. What I really mean is, I want to know and be conscious of everything that happens. We'll see about that when the time comes. Can I come in? Sure. Well, how's she this time, Doc? Coming along just fine, Rick. Did you ask him about going out dancing, things like that? Not yet. Should be very good for you. Exercise is fine. Dancing, walking, golf, everything. Even take a drink if you want to. Don't try to knock yourself out, but enjoy it. It should help to relieve your tensions and anxieties. Tell me, Doc, why does she have tensions and anxieties anyway? Try having a baby yourself and see. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Howard. Thank you, Doctor. Did you hear what he said about dancing? We can still go to the dances at the club. For a little while yet. May I have another oh, one? Thank you, I'd love it. Thank you. Thank you, Ethel. You're welcome. The orchestra is very good tonight, isn't it? Oh, very good. How about some champagne, Dad? Champagne? Excellent idea. Thank you. Thank you.
wife is quite a dancer. Yes, she loves dancing. Naturally. Dancing runs in our family. I'm beginning to hope it doesn't run too strongly. think she should make a spectacle of herself. Rick, perhaps you should go out I there I should have stopped her before. Dislike you? Why, Rick? I... Keep smiling. Keep smiling. Don't act as if I'm telling you anything. Oh, Rick, I don't understand what Myla, I. Myla, you're a married woman. You've been acting like like some cheap dance hall dame. All those men cutting in on you. Well, I thought you wanted your friends to dance with me. How can I help it if they cut in? Myla, you can Rick, help with. Uh... No, sorry, Jerry. You see, Lala wants out for a while. We're just stopping now. Oh. to keep dancing as long as you cut in on. No, Lila, no, that's at Deb parties. I thought you knew something. Well, I didn't know. I thought I was being nice to your friends. Yes, they were like a pack of dogs after you. What does that make me? Now, look, Lila, other girls don't like seeing their men make like wolves over a new girl. And the men wouldn't have acted that way if you hadn't made them do it. With that, that, that cheap show you put on out there. You were like some common... Common what? Go on, say it. I'll say this, Lila, you've got to learn how to handle yourself, how to get along in a crowd, and you can't do it like that. And that, that band up there. But one would think you were intimate friends with those, those black cats. What's wrong with them? They're perfectly nice, and they were trying to be nice to me. They're just as anyone else in this yes, room. Yes, Lila, yes, I, I remember how you feel about Negro jazz players. Rick, I'm sorry. I'm strange here, I didn't know. And I love you. All right, all right, let's go, let's go. I've been walking and thinking, trying to make up my mind. To what? What do you mean? Sally, will you do something for me? Something really important? Yes, of course. In heaven's name, what is it? Here. Lie back. I would like to go away to have my baby. I want you to go with me. Lila, whatever made you think of that? I've been thinking a lot lately, that it's the best thing for me to do. But what about Rick? He wouldn't have that. He won't know where I am. I'll leave a note that I've gone to California to be with my mother. He has no address, no names. He doesn't even know the name of the Anne I told him about. That isn't fair to Rick. You know he'll be frantic. You're right. In a way, it isn't. But in another way, it is. You see, Sally, I'm not thinking about myself so much. I'm thinking about Rick, his family, and the baby. Don't you see how terrible it would be if the baby is dark or looks Negro in other ways? They'd just die. They'd never get over it. It would be disastrous for all of us. If I go away and that happens, I won't come back. And Rick need never see me or the baby again, if that's what he wants. I want my baby, Sally. I want it more than anything in the world next to Rick. 
That's something to think about. And if the baby is all right, I'll bring it right back. He'll get over the whole thing, and, and later everything will be good again. Tell me, Sally. Let me think about it. When is the time supposed to be? About five weeks. Well, that gives us a little time to figure it out, if we can. Last night, I was going to tell Rick everything. I was sure that was the thing to do. But as I kept on thinking about it, I knew that would be worse than anything else. If I only had someone to go to, someone who would know what to do, like a judge or something, I... That's a good thought, Lila. Maybe we can find someone else to give advice about it. Heaven knows I don't know what to say. Can you stay here tonight? No, I feel better. I'll go. I better get home as fast as I can. Well, call me tomorrow. We'll get together whenever you say. Lila, I'm with you, whatever you do. Thank you, honey. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night. Everything's all right, Mrs. Layton. 
Oh, the baby. Did I have... Yes, Mrs. Leighton. It's all over and everything's all right. You just lie back and relax. You have a fever. Oh, what do you mean? What about the baby? Tell me about the baby. Well, everything went well, Mrs. Leighton. The doctor will be in to tell you... But the baby, is it black? Rick, I want to see my baby. I want to see my baby. Well, I must see it. I must. Nurse, will you tell the doctor? I want to speak to my wife. Rick, what is it, darling? Tell me, is it... Lila, I felt I should be the one to tell you. The baby did not live. the baby now? Oh, yes, please. All right, Miss Malcolm. how this picture got broken? Yes, ma'am. Uh, it got broke while you were still in the hospital. Did you break it? No, ma'am. Then who did? You're the only one who touches the things in my room. No, I'm not. Well, I guess I'm going to have to tell you. Mr. Layton was looking through your room just before you came home. He took that picture apart. I saw him. Did he read the state on the back? Yes, of course he did. Yes, ma'am. He knows that's not your mother, Mrs. Layton. He said so. And what else, Bertha? He found that book about intermarrying between colored people and whites. It was in your dresser. I was cleaning the room. What did he think, Bertha? What did he say? Well, he didn't say much, but he was real upset. I don't know what he thinks, Mrs. Layton, but he don't know anything. And what about you, Bertha? 
What do you know? Mrs. Layton, I don't know nothing. Do you want that book? I'll go to my room and get it. The book? What's it doing in your room, Bertha? Well, I told Mr. Layton it was mine. He didn't believe me. I, I wanted to read it anyway. That was sweet of you, Bertha. Really sweet. How long have you known about me? Miss Lyman. You don't ever have to worry about me. I know you love your husband. I just hope you can get along together again with him. Don't tell him anything. Wouldn't do any good. I'm leaving now. Bertha, please leave. Oh, she, she was just telling Take you... Take your hands off my wife and get out of the room. All right. All right, Mr. Rick, I'm going. What is it, Rick? What's wrong? Have I done anything now to... Now, you tell me just what she was doing with her arms around you. Now, what is this, Lila? This, this fascination you seem to have for Negroes. What is it? I don't know what you mean, Rick. Darling, I know you're still terribly shocked about the baby. I know how miserable you are. I am, too. Can't we try to help each other? Can I do anything? Now, you tell me why you asked if that baby was black. I told you. I was afraid it was joking. Well, that's nonsense. It isn't nonsense. The poor little thing did choke. Why didn't you ask if it were dead? Why did you say black? I was dreaming one of my full dreams, but it was true. It was a horrible nightmare that came true. Were you dreaming when you asked to see that baby? Why, yes. Even when I was coming out of it, I was half dreaming. The dream seemed so real. Well, you weren't dreaming when you saw the child and said, it's white. No, no, you were surprised. I told you that. I thought it would be red. Oh, red. Red. Now you say you thought it would be red. First you said you thought it would be black. You didn't ask if that child were alive. You didn't ask if it were a boy or a girl. No, you were only interested in the color. But, Rick, I was dreaming. And you won't admit why you asked if it were black. Admit. I told you. You won't tell me! You don't have to, Lila. No, you don't have to, because I know. You were afraid that child would be black, just like that black band player. Now, let me hear you. He was a dream, too. I even heard him make the date with you. I asked you about it, but you wouldn't admit it. No, you wouldn't admit it. But you went back and saw him, didn't you, Lila? You went back and saw him, and then you went to bed with him. Oh, Rick. And right after that, you got pregnant. And then you started reading about miscegenation. Oh, yes. I found the book, Lila. I found it. You were afraid. You were scared that child would be black. Oh, you don't know what you're saying, Rick. That's the craziest thing I ever heard. Oh, yes, it's crazy, crazy. Crazy because it's true. It is not true. And I cannot let you believe that. That baby was your baby. Yours and mine. Ours, do you hear? I hear lies. Nothing but lies. Lies, lies like this. Just like this. That was not your mother. No, look, 1901, photographed in New York. Now, why didn't you tell me that was your grandmother? But, oh, no, Lila, you couldn't tell me the truth about anything, could you? Could you? B. Well, isn't that what he called you, that band player, B? Is that your name? Well, how would I know with all these, these lies about you, your family? What about your family? Do you have a family? Where do they live now, Lida? Did they ever live in Richmond? Were you telling me the truth about them being in California or Venezuela, were you? Now, look, tell me something. Did you ever tell me the truth once about anything, Lila? Did you? Just once? Oh. No, no. Yes, I did. And I told you some lies. But what I told you about the baby is the truth. Now, just how can I believe that? You don't want to believe it. You don't want the truth. You want to believe that I slept with another man. Well, I can see that you're going to believe it regardless. So what's the use? Oh, I've had enough of this. Leave me alone. Believe what you want. <laughs> 
I don't know what to do. I only know I can't believe anything you say. Maybe we shouldn't talk about this for a long time. Maybe it's better that this is a closed thing between us. I don't know. I don't know. I've got to be going into town now. I'll be staying overnight. I, I have to think, Lila. I just have to think. I'll be back tomorrow night. Bye, Rick. try to find you? Maybe for a while, but I doubt it. You won't be able to anyway. They don't know my name or where I came from. As Rick says, they don't know anything about me. Part of the lies I tried to live on. It's just as well they don't know. I better go now, Sally. Thanks, honey. You've been a wonderful friend. I'm going to miss you. And tell that family of yours I'll see them at vacation time. I hope they'll want to see me. You know they will. Goodbye, honey. Goodbye. Bernice. Mm -hmm. 